Okay, today we're going to talk about best practices in writing, the traditional essay in first-year college writing. Introductions should spark the reader's interest and establish the writer's ethos, expertise on the topic. To get ideas of how to do an introduction, look at some of the sample essays that your teacher has provided you in the readings and see what other authors do in their introductions. This is These are some examples that came came from real student writers from the spring of 2008 at Lansing Community College. So here's an introduction that was interesting. Imagine Bob, a 23-year-old male lifting weights in the gym. He has been working out since he was 16, but didn't get heavily into the gym until three years ago. Reading magazine articles about lifting weights, and I'm not going to read the whole thing. And then down at the bottom of the introduction, the author writes, this person, Bob, that I'm relating to is actually myself and the experience I've had. So it's kind of a little story and then the writer re tells us, reveals to us that this person is actually him. Another example of interesting introduction, from the time America was created, stereotypes began to develop. Stereotypes are just as much a part of the American culture as fast food restaurants. According to the Oxford English Dictionary, by the way, that's pleasing to see the student use the Oxford English Dictionary, which is available free online in LCC's uh, library databases, rather than Wikipedia or an encyclopedia or a regular dictionary, which is frowned upon by many of the teachers who read portfolios. According to the Oxford English Dictionary, a stereotype is a preconceived or oversimplified idea of the characters which typify a person's situation, etc. To be labeled by a misconception, ignorance, or just plain hate is unfortunate, but it happens every day. The title of my essay, His La Ticano, is a combination of the four categories in which I, as well as people who share my same ethnic background, are commonly pulled into. Okay, and then it goes on. So. Um, and this writer has also established their credibility on the topic because they're writing about a group of people who they are arguing have been stereotyped and they're a member of that group. Titles. Academic titles are usually long, five to ten words, and often use colons. Academic titles usually help focus the paper and sometimes create a play on words or allude to something in the paper. The title is the reader's first impression of the essay, and remember, you never get a second chance to make a first impression. And here are some examples of titles. Uh, they, all of them are not punctuated properly. They were taken directly from student writing. The first one, for example, doesn't have capital letters where it should. The other titles look like they're punctuated properly. So all of these are using colons, and they're kind of long, and they're very uh, narrow titles that address the topic in the paper. A head-on look at being bald, life isn't always so smooth. Delusion, geni genius Chinese kung fu masters. A true struggle among many women, I am not a bitch. Weightlifters, mythical enhanced creatures on steroids. Stereotypes, I am his la Ticano. Happiness, live it, learn it, live it, love it. Okay, and summarization is the, abil the ability to summarize outside material serves two purposes. So avoid using direct quotes when possible. Instead, summarize for your reader. It makes it much easier to read. On the performance level, it shows the reader that you've engaged with the source material. And in this class, you're trying to show your competency. It also helps the reader by providing context and syn synthesized information relevant to your s discussion. And this is a best practice, but it's missing the signal in, so that's not a good thing. Signaling in and out of the signaling into the sources and explaining them is going to raise the grade in your paper by like a half a grade, probably. And you don't just say according to Smith or whatever. You need to tell us why we should care what Smith has to say. So according to research researchers at the Harvard School for Medicine, including Dr. John Smith, you know, you use that to give weight to your argument, not just to drop it in and technically make sure you haven't plagiarized. It should be doing more than that if you're looking at getting above a two-point. If you want a two-point, if you're happy with that, and you can just say according to Smith and then blah, 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 and you should be okay. You do not expect, you cannot expect readers to go and read your work cited and figure out the validity of your sources. You need to help them out with that in the paper itself. 
Okay, so this is just a good example of summarization. Nikki Harris, an employee at Archer Daniels Midland Company, sued them for sexual harassment, but was one of the women who had been denied. She was told dumb blonde jokes for a 10-month period before she took action. Harris complained to her supervisor many times that she was um, in an unsuccessful, hostile working environment. She had the lowest working performance out of the whole office and failed to meet her sales goals. Okay, it goes on. So basically, this is a very complicated court case, which has been summarized in a paragraph, and it just needs to have the proper citations. Research. Your ability to conduct scholarly research is evidenced in your work cited, as well as in your signal phrases going into your material. Think of reading your work cited without the essay, and this is part of what will happen during the portfolio review. Some readers flip to the work cited and look at it before they read the paper, and they, and they get an impression of you. So if you have a bunch of things from Wikipedia, there are there are instructors who won't pass paper because of that. So your ability to conduct scholarly research is evidenced by your work cited. Think of reading your work cited without the essay. What would the reader think about your abilities as a researcher and writer? I think some examples here. You can pause them and look at them if you want, but I need to keep this under 10 minutes. Transitions from sentence to sentence and paragraph to paragraph are important to help the reader get through the material. And these are some first sentences and paragraphs where you're referring back, the person's referring, this, the author's referring back to what was said before. Maybe you've never had a problem in any of those situations. Instead, think of going out to eat with some friends or a girlfriend. When they say, maybe you have never had a problem in any of those situations, it has to be that in the previous paragraph, those situations were described and defined. My first point is that everyone should be treated equal and given a chance. So I hope that they've said that they're going to make some points, and then this sentence refers back to the points that they said they were going to make. My second point is, and again, this is a transition, it would be the first sentence in a paragraph, and the second point follows up on the first point, and so it provides transitions. If you say you're going to make three points, be sure to tell us where the three points are. Synthesis. Synthesis of ideas can be achieved in a number of ways. One way is to blend your personal experience in with a larger social issue, thus making your discussion relevant to the reader. I'm not going to read this, but um, I'll just read the first sentence. Chicano is one ethnic identity that associates Mexican Americans as a group. Stereotypes and misinterpretations can surface from not having enough knowledge on the different ethnic identities. Um, the writer goes through the, um, this particular paragraph brings in outside material, research, and then blends it in with his own experience. Okay, so this is one way to get really good synthesis in your paper, which will raise your grade. Details evidence, the use of details in a paragraph to support your main point within that paragraph is crucial if you want a 2.0 or above. One method to provide support or details is to use outside materials to add to your discussion. Okay, so this is a text taken from a student paper. Happiness has become a big enough issue that it is now an official study of science. The study of happiness takes the view that what's right in our lives instead of what's wrong, and their research shows us that our ability to experience happiness is 50% influenced by genetics. Okay, and here's the quotation marks. And this quote was blended into the sentence, so that makes it easier to read as well. And then they have a signal out here. Um, another example of, um, here's a signal in Glenn Beck called Hillary Clinton a bitch because she shows no emotion. He went farther on to say, and then there's a direct quote. So they're introducing the material here, giving a direct quote, and then um, they're interpreting it, interpreting it. This just goes to show us that people judge every day, especially on people they don't know. Okay, so um, you, when you're using a direct quote to add weight to your argument, you always need to introduce it have the direct quote, and then explain it and interpret it. So things that the class needs to work on are doing better proofreading. And you cannot, I mean, if you're just going to turn your paper in without ever having printed it off and proofread it, you're going to probably have a half a grade lower because it's been proven with research that you don't catch all your errors on the computer screen. So if you don't take the time to print it off and proofread it, I would never, ever submit anything of my own writing, even a letter to somebody, without printing it off and proofreading it. Um, so sentence level considerations, including sentence-to-sentence -sentence transitions and punctuation of 